there everybody, my name is Kenno and welcome back to your Montreal Canadiens franchise mode series here on the channel and we are coming up on a big episode. It is the first round of the playoffs here for your Montreal Canadiens, the 2028 Stanley Cup playoffs, not to be mistaken, and I have a good feeling about it. I have a strong feeling about how this team is going to perform. I don't have to be able to do math to know that we're going to be facing the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round. So it is a match made in hell for us as the Maple Leafs have bested us every time that we've faced them in this franchise mode series. But I have a strong feeling that that ends this year. Our team has been strong despite all of the injuries that we faced, especially in that last little stretch before the end of the season. And I still think we have a very, very abundant chance of beating the Leafs here in this first round and moving on to the second round. And once we beat the Leafs, I mean, that's it. We're, we're good. We're, we're sailing, okay? We beat them 4-0 in game 80 of the season. I'm sure we can carry that magic into the playoffs here. But let's take a quick look. I made some changes to the lineups just to kind of spark some fun. So I have not demoted, but moved Slavkovsky, Patterson, and Caulfield to the second line with Shelley, Tim Almgren and Nick Suzuki playing the wing on the top line now just for the attribute the line chemistry attribute bonus okay and also because I think we've been kind of like ignoring Tim Almgren this whole time he had 20 points in 82 games this season playing only seven and a half minutes a night on average and last year he had 14 points in 82 games with three goals playing just around nine minutes and 20 seconds he's decent defensively he, he can win some face-offs and he can put up points in limited roles. And I think with Suzuki and Shelley, he might be able to put up a lot of points. Maybe if it doesn't work, we can put Slavkovsky up there. But again, that just negates the line chemistry bonus. Aside from that, I think we're ready to go forward wise. Defensively, I want to keep it the way it is. I know Dobson wasn't really as good as we wanted him to be after acquiring him. But I don't think that means that he's not going to work out, especially on that top line with Hudson. I think the Suns line will be fine, and hence the Rhinebacker as that second pair will be okay as well. I also have Dobson on the power play now. It was Hudson and uh, I believe we had a five forward power play on the second pair. So we have Hudson and Dobson on the power play now, and I'm sure that they will contribute in this first round. And then it is Dag and Dostal because Dag, after coming up around the trade deadline, was stellar. Turning his season around, finishing with a 907 save percentage, 285 goals against average, and two shutouts through two, 32 games played. He was stellar toward the end of the season, and Dostal was amazing at the beginning of the season. Definitely slowed down a bit, but look at him now. He's still a 902 save percentage, 296 goals against average, with three shutouts and 31 wins in 45 games played. He was also great. These two together, if they'd performed this way throughout the entire season, we, we would have clearly won the Vesna Trophy, but that's in the past. We made the playoffs. That's all that matters. Now it's just about getting past the Leafs and getting through these playoffs because we are in win now mode. I don't know how many times I have to say that. We need to win, Matt. Win right now. Right now. But here we are. Game one of the 2028 Stanley Cup playoffs at the Bell Center in Montreal against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And before we get into the simming, there's two things I want to quickly do. I want to take a look at the injury report because I can't really remember how long our injuries were to uh, Sean Farrell, Caden Gooley, and Quinton Musty. I believe Gooley was out for the rest of the season and the postseason. But I don't know how long Farrell and Musty are out for. So Musty's actually almost ready to return. He just needs a few more days. Gooley is done for the season. He's not back till just before the draft. If we make it to the Stanley Cup Finals, and if we go to like seven games in each series, he might be able to get one game in, but I don't think so. And Sean Farrell is out just another, just under 10 games, or 10 days. So we're going to have some big boosts to the offense coming up soon. I wish we could get Gooley in. I'd love to have Gooley and Musty or Gooley and Farrell coming back if I could only have two of them. But, you know, I'll, I'll take what I can get. It sucks that we don't have Gooley, but... I, I, I feel strongly about this. And then for the Toronto Maple Leafs, let's take a quick look, see if they're weak in any department. And they are. Holy crap. Austin Matthews is out with a sprained ankle. He's returning in a few days. So they're going to be without him for at least one game. And Nick Robertson is pending evaluation. So he's out for a decent amount of time at least. So that's going to be a good boost for us, a good opportunity for us. And the second thing I wanted to do was take a look at the Leafs lines. Now, that, Especially now that we know that Matthews and Robertson aren't in them. 
So the forwards for the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, st still look pretty damn good. They got William Nylander, 94 overall on that top line with John Tavares and Mitch Marner. They've stacked up that top line big time. Marner is up to a 96. He put up 99 points in 82 games this season. His second straight 99 point season. Third 99 point season of his NHL career. So he is, uh, he is very good for them. On the second line, they got 91 overall Matthew Nyes. How did he get up that high? He's 84 points in 82 games with 36 goals. Holy cow, he's been a force for them with Carl Henriksen in the center, and he hasn't really been much. He, I think he's more in the lineup at this role because Matthews is out. 25 points in 82 games, and Bertuzzi on that top line as well. And last year in the playoffs, they did amazing. The, uh, all these players did great. 26 points in 27 games for Bertuzzi especially, so... This team looks good. This team looks good. Their bottom six a little weak with uh, Lizelle Jones and uh, Matthew Joseph as their third line. And then Cam Deneen, a defenseman, with Kale Fleury, another defenseman, and Ty Voigt on that fourth line. So, uh, I mean, they're very weak up the center. John Tavares is still a capable centerman, but he's not a Matthews. He's not... Uh, especially a Nick Suzuki or Elias Pettersson. We have them beat up the middle. Their wingers outshine us, no doubt. Their wingers are powerful as hell. Yaroslav Kofsky, Cole Caulfield definitely put up some fight, but they got 94 overall William Nylander, 96 overall Mitch Marner, and 91 overall Matthew Nyes, not to mention uh, Austin Matthews coming back, who is currently at 97 overall. After having 31 points in the playoffs last year, at 96 points this season, 48 of them being goals. This guy has not scored under like 40 goals in almost a decade. <laughs> he has been unstoppable for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And look, it's good that they don't have Nick Robertson because he is an 87. He had 20 points in 26 games last season, 61 and 68 this season before going out with an entry. Wow. Wow, we, uh, it feels weird to say that we lucked out with those two being injured, but they still look scary good in their top six. Defensively, they have Miko Kokkonen and Timothy Liljegren as their top pair. And this, this is what I mean. If you're if you're watching the Toronto Maple Leaf series that I have going right now, I don't have Kokkonen and Topi Niemela on my roster. They are just not in the file. But I said that these guys were in the game before I made that save, and they're not in my file. So I don't know what happened to them, but they were magically gone. But for this... Uh, franchise mode series they do have Miko Kokkonen and Timothy Lilligren on that top pair and they've been they look pretty good uh, Morgan Riley's down to an 84 he still has decent attributes though and he is with Topin Niemela on that second pair and then Kevin Ball and Vincent Dayarnay on the third pair big boy Vincent Dayarnay and then in net they have Piotr Kachekov none other than than Piotr Kachekov who did rough in the playoffs last year, but for the Leafs this year, he was stellar. 36 wins, 2 shutouts, 9-11 save percentage, and 2-8-0 goals against average in 65 games played. He, he's exactly what we wanted him to be when we tried to sign him, but then he went to our arch nemesis. <sighs> he is going to probably be the scariest thing to deal with. If we can get a win here before Matthews comes back, that would be amazing. But I've taken way too much time bragging about the Leafs. I am a Toronto Maple Leafs fan by nature, but in this series, I am a born, bred, and blooded Montreal Canadiens fan. I am a Habs fan through and through. We are the general manager of the Montreal Canadiens, the most historic and powered franchise in NHL history, the team with the most Stanley Cup wins in NHL history, and we are going to add to that this season after we overcome the Toronto Maple Leafs, after we slay the freaking dragon that is the Toronto Maple Leafs in this franchise mode series, and it all starts here at the Bell Center in Montreal. I'm pumped up. Are you guys pumped up? If you're pumped up, let me know in the comments down below. Let's get going. First game of the 2028 Stanley Cup playoffs coming right up. As is tradition, we always slow sim these games, and if you guys want me to change that up and quick sim some of the games, you let me know that, but I do like slow simming them, especially when it comes to the playoffs, but let's get going. The traditional historic line, first period, and it's a good first period. Nick Suzuki opens the scoring with a power play goal, followed by Seth Shelley with three minutes left in the first period, and David Reinbacker getting on the board on Pyotr Kachetkov just under two minutes later. Shots are 18-3 to for your Montreal Canadiens, and we are outscoring them three to zip zero zilch after one period. Now, they could come back. They could come back, but I, I have a strong feeling they're not going to. Second period. 
and the Maple Leafs get on the board a power play goal by William Nylander before Daniil Gushin with just under a minute left in the second period puts us back up by three making it 4-1 shots 25 to 18 for your Montreal Canadiens so the Leafs definitely poured on the shots there they had 15 in that second period alone but man man we are still keeping the door closed. Dag is keeping that door closed. Let's see if he can keep it shut and maybe put a lock on it here in the third period. We're going to slow sim this one as is playoff tradition and see if this team can overcome. But William Nylander gets his second of the game on Gabriel Dag. It is now 4-2. And then Topa Niemela gets a goal on Gabriel Dag. It's now 4-3. They're just down by one and they're pouring on the shots. They get a power play here just under eight minutes to go. We get a power play. Can we add to our lead? We do not. Oh boy, we, we just under three minutes to go. Can we keep the lead? Can we keep the lead? And we do. We walk out of game one with a nice four to three win. I wish we could have kept it a little further apart. You know, I wish they didn't claw back in so much, but Dag still stood strong. He only allowed three goals on 33 shots. Very impressive performance by the 21 year old six foot five netminder. So game one is in the books. We're heading into game two now, and it's more than likely that the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to get Austin Matthews back. We can check the lines, and you know what? I'm going to do that right away. So they do. Austin Matthews now on that top line with William Nylander and Mitch Marner. Matthew Nyes on the second line with John Tavares and Tyler Bertuzzi. So their top six is menacing now. Absolutely terrifying for us to face, but we have a really good top six too. We have a really good top six too. Another quick thing while we're on the like view lines thing, I want to see how Joshua Waugh did after we traded him. He had 19 points in 21 games for the New York Islanders after we traded him. I definitely think we're, we're, we're shafting him on the power play time. I think that's what hurt his point totals this season. And that injury to start too definitely hurt, but I mean, we got Noah Dobson, so I'm not, I'm not too upset about it. And one last thing I wanted to check was Alex Newhook. I miss him dearly. I miss Wa and Newhook. We would have been so much stronger if we kept them. But really, where would we have fit them? But Newhook put up 45 points in 70 games with a minus 16 on the season. No, that's not great. I mean, he was amazing defensively, and I really wish we could have kept him because he was oh, fantastic defensively. Now I want... Now I, oh, damn, now I want to trade for him again in the offseason. But I don't expect to have to because I expect to win the Stanley Cup this offseason. I expect... To be Stanley Cup champions and put a nice little ribbon on this franchise mode series with a Stanley Cup. But we can only do that if we get by the Toronto Maple Leafs game two of the 2028 Stanley Cup playoffs against the Toronto Maple Leafs at the Bell Center, Bell Center still in Montreal. Can we come out with a win? I would absolutely love to win here and go back to Toronto at the Scotiabank Arena with a 2-0 series lead with the ability to possibly sweep them at home. But let's go first period. And it's a one nothing lead for the Toronto Maple Leafs after, after one. It's a power play goal by John Tavares that puts them up. We are out shooting them heavily in 17-9. But they're going into the second with the lead currently. It's just nothing though. It's nothing. We have poured on heavily, heavy shots before. We have poured on heavy, heavy amounts of goals. We can do it now. And I don't know why I keep using the term poured on. It kind of sounds like if I say it too fast, I'm saying like the, 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 the word that rhymes with corn, if you know what I mean. But not going to say it. Let's go. Second period. And it's a 2-2 tie. Seth Shelley gets us on the board, tying it at 1 before Mitch Marner puts the Leafs up 2-1. And then Jordan Harris, a nice little surprise for us, ties it up 2 apiece. Shots 27-22 for your Montreal Canadiens as we head into this third period with a tie. And I expect to break that tie nice and quick. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be broken. William Nylander gets a goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs, making it 3-2. And then he gets another one, making it 4-2. And it looks like this game might be out of reach. We, it is very hard to score in the playoffs for this team with under 7 minutes to go. We do get one. Seth Shelley also double dips, making it 4-3. to three. Just under 3 minutes to go in this period. Can we tie it up? Can we get back into it? And we don't. It is a 4-3 loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs as we head back to the Scotiabank Arena series tied but look at that quinton musty is fully healed i'm going to get him into the lines right away all right and musty is back in the lineup and he's on that top line with seth shelley and nick suzuki with tim almgren being knocked down to the third line between mizak and doc so he still has the ability to put up points and i might make them the starting line i thought they were the starting line but it looks like slavkovsky patterson and caulfield got the starting line instead and you know we still have a powerful top six no doubt 93 overall, Yuri Slavkovsky, 95 overall, Elias Pettersson, 91 overall, Cole Caulfield, and 92 overall, Nick Suzuki. That is incredibly powerful. Not to mention, 87 overall, Seth Shelley, and in the top nine, 87 overall, Kirby Doc, 
and 86 overall, Jan Mizak. This team is still scary. Regardless, they, we don't have Matthews, Marner, and Nylander, but we have equally good, if not better, pieces on our team. And I mean, they don't have Elaine Hudson. We got Elaine Hudson. I mean, he's not doing as good as we'd want him to with only one point in two games, but we still have Elaine Hudson. We still have a Noah Dobson. We still have our David Reinbacker. We still have an insanely good team here. But here we are, game three of the playoffs against the Toronto Maple Leafs, now at the Scotiabank Arena, series tied. Can we go back up two to one in this series? Let's see. First period. And it's a one nothing lead by Cam Denied for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Shots are nine to seven for your Montreal Canadiens, but we're currently trailing in this one after one. But I have a feeling we'll come back. I have a feeling we'll tie it up or take a lead here. I'm, 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 I got a number of two goals. I feel two goals being scored in the second period. But let's find out. Second period. I jinxed it. I jinxed it. I've been jinxing myself a lot lately. No goals were scored in that second period. We are still trailing to the Leafs. Shots are 20 to 17 in favor of the Montreal Canadiens. So I hope we can overcome this. Let's go. Slow simming the third period. We got to get one. We got to get one to keep this game in our favor. They get a power play. Can we kill it off? We do. We get a power play in return. Can we capitalize? We don't. Under 10 minutes to go now in this third period. Still down by just one goal. We just want to tie it up. Under five minutes now. Can we get a goal? Can we just get one damn goal? Please, just one pass, Kochekov. Oh, come on. And Pyotr Kochekov stones us in his playoff debut at the Scotiabank Arena and the Leafs walk out with a 1-0 win and Brandon Gallagher goes down to a mild concussion will just replace his player that's fine by me that's unfortunate honestly I'm, I'm a little upset that uh we dropped that one and now trail in the series but I feel it coming back I feel it coming back Ryan Johnson got injured down with Laval I haven't checked how they're doing I feel like I should have been more uppity with them and like checking how they're doing like like they were a really good team 56 11 and 5 holy crap they were a good team but you know, we'll we'll keep we'll keep an eye on them if we if we can. We'll keep an eye on them if we can. My focus is on the big club and game four against the Toronto Maple Leafs here in the playoffs, still at the Scotiabank Arena. I had hoped to be winning this one and winning the series, but maybe I jinxed myself. Let's see if we can at least win this one and tie the series up. First period. And it's a 1-1 tie after one. Seth Shelley opens the scoring for your Montreal Canadiens before Tyler Bertuzzi ties it up. Shots 12 apiece as well. So it has been a very even battle after one. Can we break the evenness of this and take a lead in the second? Let's find out. Second period. Oh. Seth Shelley double dips. Gets his second goal of the game on the power play. But the Leafs go crazy. Matthew Nyes gets one just uh, over 10 seconds later, John Tavares gets one, and then Miko Kokinen with under half a minute to go in the period gets another three unanswered goals, and it is 4 2 for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Shots 29 to 23 in favor of the Habs, but we're trailing. We're trailing badly. I don't want to go down 3, three to 1. I do not want to go down 3 to 1 to the Toronto Maple Leafs here. Let's go see how this third period unfolds for us. A power play for your Montreal Canadiens, but it comes up. Uh, empty before Nick Suzuki gets a even strength goal brings us within one under 10 minutes now to go in the third period but Matthews gets a power play goal to put them up by two we get a power play but it is killed off we are almost at 40 shots on net under two minutes now we get the 40th shot but it doesn't really matter Kachetkov comes up strong and we lose this one five to three and now we go back to the Bell Center in Montreal on the verge of elimination I don't like this I don't like dropping three I don't like dropping three straight games. We're going to make some quick line changes and see what we can do. All right, desperate times call for desperate measures. And you might think I'm insane for what I'm doing, but I think it'll help us. We have Quinton Musty, Kirby Doc, and Cole Caulfield on that top line. Yuri Slavkovsky with Elias Pettersson and Seth Shelley on that second line. And then Jan Mizak with Nick Suzuki and Daniel Gustin on that third line. That's the new starting line with Xavier Simino and Nate Smith and Tim Almgren on the new fourth line. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm very nervous. I mean, I'm I'm tempted to also just put Gustin on that fourth line and do Mizak, Simono, and Suzuki because Simono can put up points. He had 11 points in 25 games and he did very well with the Laval Rocket over his career. Maybe Nate Smith, he's been very good, but I think we're gonna keep it like this with Gustin getting the opportunity to possibly slay for us. Defensively, I also wanna make some changes. And the changes that I decided to make are quite sweeping. It's Hudson and Barron, the dominant first top pairing from last season. 
reunited now for the playoffs. Hensler and Rhinebacker on that second pair because, well, Rhinebacker is doing good. Hensler could probably be, be demoted, but I don't know where else to put him, honestly. And then Harris and Dobson as that uh, third pair. I could move them up to the second pair and do Hensler and Rhinebacker as that third pair. And maybe, yeah, no, that's what we'll do. We'll do the starting line of Harris and Dobson, our top line of Hudson and Baron, and then Hensler and Rhinebacker as the third pair because they are struggling a little bit. And in net, it is Lucas Dostal with Dag backing him up. And it's not because Dag's done bad. He's... 21 years old this is his first shot in the nhl let alone nhl playoff action and he's got a 900 save percentage we have high scoring on he's got a 329 goals against average and a 900 save percentage so he's facing a hell of a lot of shots i mean 118 saves through four games is crazy but it is dostal's time to see if he can shut the door for us and get us a win in game five do or die here for your Montreal Canadiens. And look at that, Sean Farrell's back. That helps us a lot. I wish I'd checked to see if he was close. Let's get the lines edited quickly. And it is much better now with Farrell as the center on that third line. Suzuki shifting to the wing. Mizak on the other wing. Musty, Dak, and Caulfield still on that top line because I want to give three lines of scoring and I think this is the best way to do it. I mean, Suzuki's going to be playing like a 94, or sorry, a 95. Patterson's going to be playing like a 97. Caulfield's going to be playing like a 93. Slavkovsky's going to be playing like a 94. Pharrell's going to be playing like a 93. This team is going to be, or 92. This team is going to be scary to face. We just have to beat the Leafs here. We have to give ourselves some hope in game five back in the Bell Center in Montreal. We got the fans behind us. We got to get a win here. I honestly don't know what I'll do with myself if we don't win this one. If we get beaten by the Leafs three straight times that we face them, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. First period. And Matthews gets the Leafs on the board. one nothing after one. Shots 13-10 to for the Toronto Maple Leafs as well. And we trail this one going into the second period. We need a bounce back. We need a bounce back in a big way. Second period. And Miko Kokkonen makes it 2 nothing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Shots 26-20 to for them as well. And it's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good. It looks like we're going to be knocked out in five games. It looks like we're going to be knocked out in five games. Let's see if we can rebound. Third period coming up. I I, I want to feel positive. I want to feel positive. But <laughs> Ty Voigt makes it three nothing for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and it looks like our season is done before we could even get it started in the postseason. And Matthew Nyes makes it four nothing. We have a power play here, but we're not getting anything by Kochekov. I wish to God that he had signed with us because he is stellar. Dostal's good. Dostal's good. Don't get me wrong. Dag's gonna be good, but Kochekov single-handedly just sent us home. Your Montreal Canadiens have fumbled to the Toronto Maple Leafs in three straight appearances against them, this time in the first round. And I've lost a lot of hope for what this team can do. We didn't even get a single freaking puck past Kachetkov there. Unfortunately, that's the way this one's going to end. I don't know what to think now. Um, we are out of the playoffs. The Toronto Maple Leafs are going on to face the winner of, I believe, the Lightning and Pittsburgh series. Yeah, they will face the winner of the Lightning and Pittsburgh series. It will be New Jersey facing whoever wins the Caps and Flyers series. And in the West, we have the Kings and the Ducks already slated to face up. And then the winner of the Avs and Wild series facing the Dallas Stars for the conference semifinals. But our road to the playoffs has come through an end. I'm on I'm sorry that we couldn't come up for you guys. Um, the series is not over yet. We all go one more season at least to see if we can come through in the next season, get a president's trophy, bounce back in a big way. Hopefully we'll have some development by some of our rookies and have a really strong team for next year again. I mean, our window still looks good. And in fact, our window might have just gotten really tight and might have shrunk more than we expected because Pharrell, Shelley, Musty, Mizak and Almgren Gustin all need contracts as well as Smith and Barron but they're not that big of a piece in the lineup and then Dostal doesn't want to come back and he was stellar for us this season so we're gonna have to wonder what the goaltending tandem will look like next season and we're gonna ha have to wonder who we might have to let go of in the offseason or what changes we might have to make there will be changes in this offseason though because I want to win I really want to win but that is gonna wrap this one up I will sim through the offseason uh, between videos and I'll be back for the NHL entry draft in the next video but that is going to wrap this one up 
Thank you everyone for joining me on this adventure. This has been a blast. The series is not over yet. It's coming to an end shortly, but we still need to go through at least one more year. If you guys want to see it, see it keep going, you let me know. I have no problem with keeping it going because it is a fan favorite. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing the whole 25 years. And if you want me to change the format and do like full season videos, I can do that too. That's no problem for me. If we get past this next season and we still lose, then I'll start doing larger chunk videos anyways, because I want to get through the 25 years. But thank you guys. You have been all amazing. This journey has been incredible thanks to all this love and support. And just know that everyone who has subbed, you have made my day every single day. Getting to 100 subscribers is never something I thought I could do. And I, uh, I'm i going to shut up about it because I've been saying it in every video since I've gotten it. But thank you. Thank you. And thank you. And I will see you guys as we go through the 2028 NHL entry draft in the next video.